good afternoon to everybody. Well, we were about to lock it up for the day, and we started on an interesting topic about UFOs, or unidentified flying objects, aliens in general. And uh, if you watch our other recap, Jill, Kevin's wife, and the stepson Parker in the room, and he asked about UFOs. And, well, Mr. Schmidt had a bright idea to start talking about it, and I said, well, let's just record it. It'll be fun. So he believes in UFOs, and I am would be on the other side of a doubter. And I just don't think that there would be any reason why anyone that could get to our little spot in the universe would even care. Like, the idea to me is just so boring. Like, why would anybody care? You're going to come to this little crappy rock in the middle of nowhere? It's like going to BFE. You're going to go and, and talk to these people? But what if this rock in the, in the middle of BFE? What if this rock happens to be in the best neighborhood of the universe? Then it would be overran with other creatures. <laughs> maybe, the, maybe the few that I've visited are the only ones that exist. Maybe. And, and that have the ability to, or even the care to get here. Or maybe, who knows? I just know from my own personal belief, and, and of course, why it helps me, uh, think clearer and talk faster and better mm -hmm. so we you come to this conclusion you have uh steven i think his last name is dreyer and uh, you have all these doctors and professionals and countless people in the intelligence community within the united states and all over the world that have come out with all sorts of documented proof of of other creatures, whatever they are, that have visited the earth. It, it's hundreds of thousands of documents, footages from everything from uh, pilots talking to ground control. What is this object? Uh, you know, I mean, it just goes on for ad nauseum. And then to take it a step further is just look at the Sumerian cuneiforms, the Sumerian texts where they go in great detail of uh, the Anunnaki and how they came here and what their purpose was and how they colonized the, the world and we're actually offspring from them. You know, when you say the Anunnaki and the Sumerian text, I was in a meditative state. It has been a couple of days ago and I was thinking about the desolation of our planet, kind of like an I'm legend or any of those other apocalyptic movies. And some group of humans comes back and settles and they end up at Universal Studios at the Harry <laughs> Potter exhibit and they find all of J.K. Rowling's texts and like, oh my God, this is this is what used to happen. This is <laughs> Harry Potter. He was a great being and these aliens and wizards were here. That's what I think about the Anunnaki text. What if thousands of years from now somebody discovers J.K. Rowling and makes it the Bible? I think that is a, a great point. Except... Somebody had to know the cycles of the destructive nature of the planet that we live on. And you can see that whether it is in Egypt, you can see it, well, you can see it in many places around the world where they went to great care to make sure certain buildings, certain messages to the best of their ability were preserved in such a form where an earthquake, a fire, flood, nothing, that just the natural elements of the world would not destroy it. That is something that we just don't do with a uh, Harry Potter novel. No, no, we don't. And so the technology that they may or may not have had, we certainly know that the ancients had technology far greater than what uh, modern archeologists and historians give them credit for. Well, the pyramids at Giza, if anybody out there has ever tried to build anything on the weekend or a woodworking course, <laughs> for the Great Pyramid at Giza to be within one little midget of being off, just one degree on one side of a structure that big is crazy well, impressive. Well, it was just off of being, uh, they were true north or you know, in the celestial bodies, uh, it, it's just phenomenal. We could go on talking forever about uh, all the grand monuments that are placed on uh, different places around the earth that have the, they match parallels and then they have energy 
spots that connect and all, all. I mean, there's just a million things. But what we can't say is that the ancient past, they had the ability to move and cut stone that is tens to hundreds of tons a piece. And there's no way to do that with a bunch of guys rolling some logs and pulling them with the string. You would have to have hundreds of thousands. Probably yeah. unlikely, but do you think that some kind of ancient alien came to Earth? No, but I do think that we were more civilized than we... Oh, I think we're much more civilized than we give our own we're... self credit for. And we have all sorts of evidences from around the globe where we have, the humans have done remarkable things that could only have come from advanced mechanisms, this machinery, technology. And so I think the argument is funny about a Harry Potter, but, but our ancients did things knowing that when we build something out of wood, after a few hundred years, it's going to be gone. We do something on this, it's going to be gone. We do anything, it's going to be gone. Unless we do it in this way to preserve it. And so when you have the, when you have Sumerian texts, it's hard just to immediately discount it as crazy nonsense. Because when you read it, it is right out of a sign. I mean, you're like, this is it's a hundred percent sci-fi yeah. sci and you're just going, wow. And then you can see the parallels in that with inside the old Testament and then the uh, forbidden books of the old Testament. And then you just go, what is going on? And then you have the hundreds of people in the intelligence communities around the world that risked their life and limb. And some of them actually did <laughs> risk completely their life and limb. Okay, so what's the point if aliens did come? What is their point here? Who knows? Like, I don't think they came to mine or get stuff from our planet. That's well, you can, you can certainly look around just like uh, some documentaries that we've seen on the uh, notion of big, huge uh, mining operations. Owning a mine in the past, I certainly see around the world where we think it's a natural phenomenon where it certainly looks like a former mine like it is clear night and day it's a mine and see i think some of those things is maybe early miners just mimic nature which may or may not be the case but when i think of aliens coming here to mine i think all right if you have the ability to go off world if you get to our own kuiper belt everything that makes up our world in minerals the gold silver any kind of rock all that precious metal is out in the Kuiper Belt. Because that's be. what our Earth is made out of. The only thing that is in huge disagreement with that notion is that we were the only, none of those places have atmospheres. Yeah, but they don't need atmospheres. You, you don't know, you don't, you don't need, you don't know that. Yeah, but if you have I mean, the you're technology. You're like a preacher just making some sort of a, you don't know. You don't know what their technology is. Well, yeah, but if you have the technology, I mean, we know, well, we what think we know the closest star to Earth is two point something light years yeah, away. So if you have the ability to travel two lights in one lifetime, we don't know. I, I just don't think you need an atmosphere to go mining. It just seems like a ridiculous notion to me. I mean, we might think that, but we don't know how wormholes work. We don't know how. So I'm just thinking, all right, so you're the super rich alien. You're the Bill Gates of aliens. And you need some, <laughs> you need some earth pine trees to cover your study in because your trees aren't good enough on your world. Yeah, very <laughs> like, seems like a weird, seems like a weird notion. Hey, this is what I'm going to get you to do. You're going to go down to this third rock from the sun, Earth, and grab some pine trees and mill them up and bring them back for me. We like Italian marble. It's a long way to Italy from here. It's, I mean, it's a long way, but it's not that far. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It might not be that far to them. We just don't know. We don't know. There's no way. There's no way to explain all of especially pilots, all of their encounters and all of the intelligence, that's why. I mean, we don't know why. We don't know what, we don't know. Maybe we're anything. some cosmic soap opera that's playing out. We've just got a whole bunch of uh, aliens watching us do this thing we call life. It could just be we are their version of... The Kardashians. 
I hope we don't get canceled. That'd be bad. <laughs> That'd be so bad. I, I, that's what happened to the dinosaurs. Their show got canceled. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> now they just threw a rock at us. Boom! <laughs> well, y'all weren't interesting enough stories, Stegosaurus. Bye. It, it could be. It could be a whole lot of a lot of things. Who knows? I mean, no, really. Who knows? Now, right, what about the people that say they get abducted by aliens? You're not going to abduct like a doctor or psychologist. You're going to go get Bubba on the cow field. Yeah, because who's going to believe Bubba? Who's going to believe a psychologist that gets abducted by aliens? I wouldn't believe anybody. I mean, I need a little bit of proof. Just something. Like the uh, Travis whatever story uh, that uh, Jill and I recently watched the uh, docudrama of, of their situation. I think it was back in the 70s, you know, they, this guy gets abducted. All these guys that are with him, they have no reason to lie. They're, they're, they're ostracized out of their community. They're on the verge of being charged with murder. Maybe they got some of that LSD stuff dropped in their water. Like a lot of it. <laughs> you know, who knows these things? Here it was going around in the 70s. Who knows these things? Who knows? I would venture to say that there are a lot of people that have, why risk your your, your sacred fortune no matter how small it is, on some sort of notion where everybody's going to think you're crazy. See, I can't buy that argument either. Well, like, tell me why not. Let's go back to the J.K. Rowling situation. <laughs> why are you going to risk your fortune on putting out this book? Well, well she didn't have a she thing. didn't have a fortune. Well, she didn't have a fortune, but there's other writers that stake their fortune on a book or a song or whatever. I mean, they do basically the same thing. They go out and put their whole fortune, their whole life's work into that, telling a story. But, but they don't have any ends. There's no, there's, there's nothing at the end of that for the vast majority of those people. Like, there's no reason to even suggest that they were abducted or well, done they got money off their docudrama that they got published. They wrote uh, a book about uh, it. Only 30 years later. There's a lot of authors that don't make money until they're dead. But they didn't do any. Painter. But they didn't do anything then, though. Picasso was broke. He didn't get famous exactly. until after he was dead. There's a lot of people that make great works. Man, here's a little thing. <laughs> oh, let's find the notion tough. I think it's fun to talk about, though. I think it's great to talk about. Who knows what is real or not? It, it really goes back into the, the subject we're going to talk about it. Uh, well, probably sometime next week. Is what is reality what is the notion of reality and if you start to figure out that there are certain geometric patterns that can be subdivided into inf infinity and then same way in the expanse who knows what that means in, as far as interrelations between other objects far or near in the travel and what can accommodate certain things and why something would even want to be here in the first place. Uh, maybe something was happening that we were the closest one that was, uh, that could form to their being. And so we were the closest and the easiest. Maybe we were the, like water, we're going the path of the least resistance. They, they just said, well, that's the closest and easiest. We can survive there. Boom, let's go there. You don't know. We're making so many assumptions, and everybody does. Yeah, but I say that's the only thing you can do is make assumptions. So who knows what is true or not on UFOs, other than there is a vast amount of evidence that supports that they exist, whether or not you give them any credence is a whole other matter. And I would say a vast, a lot of them you would have to discard as just, you know, hoaxy, pokesy, you know, well, that's with anything, you've got to discard, you know, get rid of at least half of it. But there is a tremendous amount of credible evidence that just absolutely says, okay, they're real. And then if, if you get to that part of thinking, all right, they're real, well, why here? Like, you go to your thought process. Why do you want to come here? This rock, what do we got? A couple of mountains and flat areas and some oceans. <laughs> well, I always think of it, all right, so we're basically or what we think, we're on the rim of the galaxy, of our spiral galaxy. What we think. Yeah, so we think. All right, so if we live in this spiral galaxy like we think. Oh, that sounds good. Yes, it does. So if there's a, a supreme life form that's got the ability to come here, 
would they be coming from another rim part of the galaxy or would they be coming from the inner part of the galaxy? Who knows? Because I'm thinking if they're coming from the inner part of the galaxy, our world has to look mighty dark with our one sun and one moon. I mean, the inside of the galaxy. You know, we're, yeah. we're, just, we're just using our, we're, we're just little peach fuzzes flying around on this ball. We have no idea how the connectivity of all the rest of the universe works. We don't know why anyone would want to come here. We don't know if this is the, like I said, this could be the least hardest place to go to. This could be the easiest and it could sustain a, a level of life for those people. And why would they come in the first place? Who knows? Maybe that we had something that was easier for them to get versus a Kuiper Belt or another planet. Easy. Everybody does things because it's a, where we take that path. Well, okay, this is a little bit easier. I can do this. This, you know, we're, we're going to go to the moon because it's easier to start there than it is to go to Mars. Allegedly. Allegedly. You know, we're, we're going to, that's how the human well, the problem human is, it's easy works. to get to Mars. The coming back thing is the hard part. <laughs> well, we, maybe. I mean, we can get probably anywhere. It's the coming back, I think, is tricky. Which, again, seems like a really risky proposition to me. Who knows? We don't know their technology. We don't know how easy or hard it is. Well, then again, we go to technology. And I think back to somebody said it somewhere. I'm sure that the greater the technology at some point looks like magic to a less developed species. Right. And the same way, it might just look like magic to you. And you just think, wow, this is stupid. These are dumb magicians with a big red nose. And, well, you know, why do they, why would they come here? Well, maybe they wanted to be entertained. Entertain me! <laughs> <laughs> see, I could see being coming here for entertainment is a good reason to come. But Yeah, I mean, we have the Kardashians. No, I mean, <laughs> duh. <laughs> Who knows these things? I think it's interesting. I think for the people that don't know all the evidence about serious, credible UFOs should actually delve into it before you make up your mind just automatically that, oh, I just don't believe in it because it seems crazy. Uh, well, that's crazy. You know, it's just like any belief system. Unless you're exploring the details of it, you can't make any critical decision. Mm. So if you can't weigh what, what the evidence shows, then you can't definitively say, oh, well, well I just discard that because that sounds cuckoo. You know, I mean, if that's the case, I mean, just look at some of the, the scriptures around the world. You just, <laughs> like what? So you just have to go take everything, learn it, know what it says, and, and weigh it. All right, I got another question for you. Since we're on the topic of UFOs and weighing evidence, what do you think somebody's main purpose would be to get here, and how would they communicate with any species on Earth? <laughs> Once they're here. Uh, have you ever heard of the Tower of Babel? Yeah, they got all the languages broken up. <laughs> right. So then they, they, we learned how to communicate with each other. Okay, what's a, some entity that gets here? What's their main purpose? Because I always go back to what's happened in human history, that the superior race of technology and being comes in and annihilates the sitting race. I mean, you think America was inhabited by white people? No, it was all in history. But I can answer your question. Why? It was a woman. <laughs> a woman said, I really like that place. And the man goes, well, by darn it. Let's go there, honey. <laughs> you just don't know. I mean, as silly as it is, you just never know. But in your opinion, what would... What would Earth have to offer if you're an interstellar travel agent? Well, let's just go. I want to hear your pitch. I have no idea. <laughs> I, but I, do, I read the. the I would text. have said we look pretty naked, but you know. I would just have to say there, there was something here that they had to have, whether it was the, the easiness it was to get gold for their atmosphere. Like I don't know how anybody, tens of thousands of years ago would just say, okay, let's write on these clay tablets, uh, in great detail how they came, why they mined, how they got it, how they took it back, 
what they used it for because the notion, uh, at least how we give people credit for ancient civilizations now would be, well, first of all, we wouldn't know how to mine. They wouldn't even know the, what the concept of mining is. And then secondly, they wouldn't have any concept of what the atmosphere is. No, they have zero concept of atmosphere. You would have, you would have no concept of any of those things. So whenever the Sumerians say, well, they came and they used humans, because it was easy for them because we were used as the workers and we were getting gold for them and mass that they could use in their atmosphere to to strengthen or link, lengthen the life of their own planet. You just have to go, how in the world do these people even come up with this notion way back then? They didn't even have Star Trek back then. Well, let me ask you this question, right? So... They came to this planet and used humans as workers. And now we're trying to get robots to do most human jobs. Mm -hmm. Don't you think an interstellar species would have had robots to do the manual labor and not need humans? Wouldn't it be easier just to have a reproducing creature? Why wouldn't they have a reproducing, self-replicating robot? It could be. Maybe we are that. That could be. Some just nice science experiment. Maybe we are that. Maybe the, yeah, there are there are that is that chromosome that just can't be explained within our own DNA. That it looks like we're just fused. I mean that is in existence. That is a part of who we are. Who knows these things? I mean, if you look back on our own, maybe fossil we are. Record, the, maybe we are the AI. Yeah, if you look back at our own fossil records, there's a lot of humanoid type species that did not make it to our current generation like not just one or two there's a lot of different humanoid looking species sure and there is absolutely no reason to think whatsoever that the notion of evolution it is even remotely true like i can't imagine you you don't see any apes slowly evolving into humans you know what i think about when i hear that is when a species evolves, they kill out the old species. So if we had really evolved from chimps, we would have killed all the chimps. There would be no chimps. Yes, there would be no chimps. That's right. It's the same with, with all of it. <laughs> yeah, every species does that. The old species dies, and the, evolve, like, the evolution of the species continues and keeps getting better. Yeah, just like that's why giraffes, you know, the ones with the longest necks, continue to live because they yeah. continue to eat or i think about it in peacocks just the whole idea of natural selection the bigger plumage makes them fly way worse so they're more susceptible to predators but the more plumage the more mates so the plumage keeps getting bigger and bigger it evolves you don't see any male peacocks with two or three little fancy eyeball feathers there's tons yeah. of them yeah. big plumage big who knows these things, Mr. Smith? It's a grand question. It's a fun thing that we just wanted to throw out and discuss just as an entertainment for just us, really. Yeah, and y'all just happened to come along for the ride. You're I welcome. I just don't know why anyone would come here. And I cannot say that we can, at least I, do not dismiss the notion when you have a large number of very credible Documents, photos, testimony, ancient records from Egyptians and Sumerians, clearly drawing UFOs. And how about the famous painting from the Renaissance where they clearly, mm -hmm. clearly draw the UFO in the background? It's nothing else but a UFO, and that is the Renaissance. To, to discount all of those things is just nonsense. It's nonsensical. Well, I think a complete discounting of those things is where does that give religion a place to stand if you have other entities out there? Like, could it just be the same? No, I don't think it could be the same at all. I mean, if you look back at pretty much any religious text, there's no mention of any aliens. Well, they, I mean, except for the Sumerian text. I, mean, you, I don't know if I agree with that because you can look at the book of Enoch or you, you can look at Genesis and talk about the Nephilim or the falling ones. Uh, it's hard to say 
that you don't see it when it's right there in front of us. I guess that's a good point. I guess I'm thinking about in a more modern time if aliens visit us today. Well, heck, they're, they're everywhere. What about the big, where you had thousands of people in Arizona that are filming this monstrosity, this mini football fields long, with it looks like a boomerang flying. It was so huge. So many people photographed it and video recorded it. And it made national headlines. Of course, they tried to squash it as fast. I mean, they brought it in and out as quick as possible. The powers that be. And how do you describe something like that? Because it was just hovering for a long time and then just, you know, goes off and disappears. With the, well, it's just mass psyop. It's just like the, it's just the perfect CIA psyop where they come out with a governor, had no idea what to do. So he has a press conference and he makes a joke about it. He has a guy dressed up as a UFO come on stage. Oh, we found the culprit. And they joke about it. And then he goes on to say, uh, we have no idea what this is. <laughs> but because people make fun of it and you make a joke about it and you dispel everybody who took the videos, the thousands, well, everybody automatically goes, oh, that that's just quackery. It's quackery. Well, it would shake up your entire way of thinking. I mean, if, like, War of the Worlds happened, I think it would kind of shake some stuff up. I mean, I think people would be questioning every religion on Earth. They'd be questioning what they were taught. I think there'd be this mass hysteria on what's really reality now. I would find it difficult to believe that they're not existing UFOs on or near this planet for some unknown reason that I have no idea <laughs> what what and why. There's just too much evidence. It's it's that overwhelming. It's so overwhelming you just have to go, geez, I really thought this was kind of crazy. And then the more you look at it, uh, you just find more. It's like going down a bunch of these rabbit holes. You just keep going down the UFO rabbit hole and you find out 30, 40% of it's just absolutely nuts. And then you got 60% of it that is so credible, you just can't go, oh, well, mm, I should discount that too because there's 20, 30, 40% quackery. It's kind of like people that say, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist whenever you're saying conspiracy facts. Yeah, and there's a lot of those conspiracy facts out there. Yeah, there's a lot of those. Which we could get into, but that's, <laughs> that's a whole other thing. We, we don't have that much time. <laughs> no. But that's neither here nor there. I, as one of the Schmidt brothers would have to say, I am on the side of there are likely and very probably UFOs near and around us even now. And see, I'm more on the side that not that I discount all those things, that I just don't see the logic in it. Like, I just don't get it. Why would you come here? What's your point? Uh, who knows? Uh, who knows? Maybe no, 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 maybe no. we're just an experiment. Maybe we're like uh, Parker, who is having a, a experiment at school. Maybe we're a science project for a Parker on another planet way far away. You just don't know these things. Yeah, that reminds me of Stephen King's Under the Dome. Yeah, <laughs> or, or the Truman Show. Yeah, Truman Show, Under the Dome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we just don't know. I mean, I'm just making jest, but we just don't know. There's a lot we don't know. Yeah, that's why we're on this quest to figure some of these things out, though. That is exactly right. All right, Mr. Schmidt, let's call it a day. Everybody, we are on all of the other alternatives. BitChute, DTube, Library, and the other one I can't remember. Yeah, look us up on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all for joining us. I hope y'all had a good time. If y'all have any insight or any documentaries that might persuade my brother that ufos are real please comment and send them because i want to forward them straight to him as often as possible send them all to me thanks have a good day